Hey guys, it's Craig. This is the all new Echo fourth generation. It has an all new design and speaker layout. I was given some early access to this one and have been using it for the past five days. Here are five updates to this all new Echo. Let's take a look. Before we start, I wanna thank you all for your help growing this community to the point that again, we got access to a device early. So thank you very much, that's cool. I appreciate it. Full disclosure, Amazon did send this review unit out for me to take a look at, but I work for you guys. You make this channel happen and my opinions are my own. Anyone from Amazon would be seeing this video for the first time with you. This is a review unit that is going back, but on the day that these do release, mine should be coming in too. You can find links in the description if you wanna order one. I think this Echo really has five updates. It's the design, the processor, the sound, the hub, and the new low power mode. We're gonna go through all those, but first, this is an Echo with Alexa. It does all the same things that you would come to expect from Alexa. It help with things, set timers, access calendars, listen to music, listen to audio books, control your smart home. The all new Echo 4th generation is still $99. It's available in charcoal, glacier white, and twilight blue. It's a big redesign for Amazon. Look at this, I've questioned it. I'm not sure how I feel about it necessarily. My question when this was first announced uh, that I talked about in my devices video and also in my Echo Dot video that you could find in the description. This design, is it about form or function? Is it about changing it up so it's just a new form and for aesthetics or does this new design support better functionality? And I learned in the Echo Dot that it did support better sound. It really did help with the front firing speakers. But the sphere shape takes some getting used to. It's a clean looking device, but let's be real about it. It looks like a ball. And because it looks like a ball, there are gonna be some of those people out there that just hate it. Here it is next to the Echo Dot third generation. The new Echo is 5.7 inches wide and 5.2 inches tall. The Echo third generation is 3.9 inches wide by 5.8 inches tall. This thing is solid, heavy duty plastic build and you got the mesh fabric on top. You also have your buttons that are kind of tucked away in the back. They feel like they'd be better here, but it would change the whole look of things. So you have your buttons on the top, volume up, volume down, your mute, which uh, turns red and also turns the light ring red. And then you got your action button. Down here, you do have the new light ring. Wasn't sure about it initially. I think on top was a little more visible, but Amazon's logic with it is that when you put it down on a surface, the glow will make it more visible but if it's bright in the room you may not see that glow and it is tucked under a sphere a big part of the redesign is the front firing speakers that I'll cover when I get to sound number two is the processor this has Amazon's first custom processor in it it is the AZ one that's designed to accelerate machine learning applications I'm just gonna read this next part the idea is the AZ one combined with an all neural speech recognition model will process requirements Plus faster, making Alexa even more responsible. Now this new speech recognition model will come out later this year, and this is when we should see these new echoes perform above the previous generations. They should process requests quicker. The AZ-1 also allows tasks to be processed on device, so it doesn't have to go to the cloud and back. Now number three is the hub. This is the first time that the Echo has a hub. It used to be that you would have to pay $49 more for the Echo uh, Plus that had a hub built in. This does have a Zigbee hub in it that allows you to pair to Zigbee devices such as uh, motion sensors, door sensors, and like right now, I have a Philip Hue color changing bulb paired to the hub in there. It's back over there. I can say, Alexa, third light on. And it's on. Alexa, third light to red. Mm -hmm. 
Once you have devices paired, you can incorporate them into routines. Like I made one here that when I open up this door sensor that's paired directly to the hub, the light behind me will turn red. So imagine what you can do with that possibilities of sensors. And a lot of sensors are Zigbee sensors. This also has a temperature sensor, so you can use temperature to trigger routines. The hub also has BLE, which stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. It is really a slower and low powered version of Bluetooth that's really meant for devices that don't use a lot of data, such as a smart bulb or a sensor, and require low power. For example, this light back here supports Zigbee and BLE. So if you have either of those protocols, you can talk to it. The hub also has something that could be big and it is a sidewalk bridge. Sidewalk is a new protocol that Amazon is using. And just to describe it to you, it is a 900 megahertz spectrum to connect low bandwidth, low power devices such as smart lights and sensors. What is interesting about this technology is that you could have devices up to a half a mile away. I know your personal devices may not go that far, but it really allows to connect things such as sensors at the mailbox, let you know when the mailman's there. Or it starts to connect different areas and it could be one of the keys to being able to have connectivity to create connected neighborhoods or cities. So we'll have to see how that develops. Number four is the big focus on sound. With the redesign, you have a front facing speaker for the first time, your two, uh, 0.8 inch tweeters there, one three inch subwoofer. I'm just gonna read this next part. Amazon says the new shape provides more flexibility with speaker placement and sound projection, which maximize stereo and spatial audio quality within a single device. So having those two speakers there and the way they kind of face out gives you better stereo sound. And the bass, it, it, it's got more bass. Bass sounds good. Like the Echo Studio that's $200, this has has facial audio in it, it will automatically sense the acoustics of a room and fine tune music to it, which is really cool, especially at this price point. The new Echo has Dolby processing that Amazon says gives you clear highs, dynamic mids, and deep bass. It sounds great. It's a great sounding speaker. It really is at its price point. We'll demonstrate and play some music in a moment. It has a 3.5 millimeter a jack on the back of it that is input or output. You can hook your phone up to it as an input and use this as a speaker, or you can come out of it and connect to an external speaker that may sound better than this. You can also use Bluetooth to stream from your phone to the Echo or from your Echo to another speaker. This does support all the usual music services that work with Alexa, such as Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. Now let's compare the audio with the previous generation of Echo. This has 360 degree audio, the way it shoots out. This is a front facing speaker. Amazon says for best results, be in front of it, be about 10 feet away, minimum six feet, and ideally you want it at about ear height. Before I do this comparison, the Echo Dot third generation does still sound great. It's a great sounding speaker. If you find a killer deal on it, don't pass it up. After listening to both of them side by side, they both sound good. This has good low end out of it, good highs, 
But I could feel the bass a little more on this. I felt it on my table, the vibration of it, and I just felt the bass was more present. It also has clearer highs. I think the highs are a little crisper out of it, just as a fuller sound. This sounds good, especially at $100. I'm really impressed by the updates that Amazon did to the sound. If you want a great speaker for music, this is a solid update. Still, it's rolling away because it's a ball. Number five is low power mode, and I also included Amazon's climate pledge. Amazon's trying to improve their carbon footprint, and they're doing things like this new low power mode. It'll lower the power of the Echo when it's not active. They're also going to be implementing later this year a dashboard that will give you information about how much power your devices are using. To build this, Amazon used 100% post-consumer recycled fabric. They're using 100% recycled die-cast aluminum and 50% post-consumer recycled plastics on it. Amazon's going to the point they're building a solar farm because they want to offset the power that the Echoes use that you buy. Uh, kind of crazy, I mean, that's a that's kind of a huge upgrade. The idea that you're sold a device and the company you bought it from is building solar farms to account for your electricity use. Really crazy, that, wow. I think the new speaker layout really does offer some great sound out of it. I am curious to see what this would sound like, pairing it up with the second one, which I'll have to do that when mine come in. I think the Hub Edition is great. It opens up a lot of possibilities since things like motion sensors and door sensors uh, usually are require a hub and don't use Wi-Fi. I'm, I found that it responds quick. I'm curious what this AZ-1 will do to it later this year. I think the biggest downfall could be the design. This sphere shape is off-putting to some people. But overall, it's a really solid update. Amazon's been killing it the, this generation. The previous one was sound. You're not gonna go wrong with that. Um, I like it. What are your thoughts on it? Have you ordered a new Echo or do you plan on ordering one? If you are gonna order one, there's a link in the description you could use for that. Next, make sure to check out this video over here to learn more about the new Amazon Echo Dot. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.